Thomas from California University of Pennsylvania. Most people like the idea of building a deck, but often the idea of making stairs can be very intimidating because laying out the stair stringer can be very challenging, or at least they think it is. What I'm going to do is show you how to lay out a stair stringer in a simple fashion in a step-by-step -step process. Here we have a typical staircase, right here, pretty small. What I'm going to be focusing on today is making the stair stringer, which is the notch board located underneath the supports of both the riser, right here, and the tread board, right here. And what the stair stringer is, is this notch board right here. Some important measurements that we need to find out include your rise and your run of each step, and your total rise to where we want to get to, up to the level we are trying to reach. Now that I am finished showing you what is needed, let's go to the drawing board and calculate the following details we've discussed. Okay, now we can start to visualize the exact measurements that we're going to need to know to lay out a stair stringer. To start off, I'm going to set a scenario up for what kind of stair stringer we're going to have to make. It's going to be uh, just for a deck, we'll say this is our ground and here's our deck right here. We're just going to go off a short distance from the top of the deck onto the ground. Now for most cases, you might need to know how far out you have to go with your stairs, but since we're just going out to the ground, we don't need to know that. That's already taken care of for us. It doesn't really matter. In this case, we're, so that being said, we're gonna have to know the one measurement being the total rise, which is right here. And for this case, I'm gonna make the total rise 36 inches, or 36 and one quarter of an inch, right there. Next thing we need to know is most commercial code requires uh, a certain rise and a certain run for each one of your steps. Generally, your rise should be between seven inches and seven and three quarters, and run is somewhere around 10 inches. For this case, uh, we're just gonna go by seven over 10, seven inches rise over a 10 inch run to start off with. With that, we're gonna take it, we already know that we're gonna make this run the same, so we don't have to worry about that. But for the rise, what we're gonna do is take that seven inch rise and we're gonna divide it by the total rise, 36 and a quarter inch. And with that, we're gonna find out how many steps we're gonna to need to get from here down to here. So using a calculator, 36.25 or quarter of an inch, divided by seven. What we get is 5.1785 and so on. Okay, so one thing we, that we did find out is it's gonna be five steps. But obviously you can't have a 0.1785 a step. So in this case, we're just gonna round it off and just be either five or six steps. Now we're going to go back to our original 36 and a quarter inch rise, and we're gonna divide it by the five steps that we now know that we're gonna need. So going back, 36.25 divided by five steps. What we get is 7.25. 7.25 or seven and a quarter inch. That is what we need to know for this. So now we, need, now we know, what we just figured out is for all these steps, each one of these steps is gonna be seven and a quarter inch rise over a 10 inch run. And what we also found out is we're gonna need five steps for everything. So five steps. That being said, what we're gonna do now is go over to the wood production lab and I'm going to lay out a stair stringer in front of you guys using what we just calculated here on the board. As for tools, the only tool you're going to need is your framing square and these two stair gauges. And the first thing we're going to do is set up the carpenter square. So what I'm going to do is with what we just calculated of the rise and run, I'm going to put onto this framing square. What I do is I put these gauges on like this against the board and I'm going to line it up till this side equals, or lines up to seven and a quarter, 
and this side lines up with 10 inches like this and then I tighten them down. What I do after that is now I'm going to start making the actual steps. Just line up against the board and I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to be begin by drawing the first step like so. That's going to be our first step. And also marking the very top of our stringer, which I'll use a second framing square, just so I don't have to take these on and off constantly. And I'm just going to line it up and draw a line the whole way across. Now that first step I made, I'm going to continue by just sliding this down and lining it up again with the line I just made and then continuing to my second step. And I'm going to keep doing this until I have the number of steps that I, that I want, which in our example will be five. So one, two, then I'm just going to add three more. Just keep sliding down. One, two, three, four. Oh. Five. Okay. And with the ball, this, this will be the bottom of our stringer. So again, just like the top, I'm going to take an R framing square up and draw the line across. Like so. Next thing we have to do, or to consider at least, is with every one of these, here's our stringer right here, each one of these uh, top these runs, there's going to be a tread board on top of it laying across, about probably like an inch thick across each one of these. And when you get to the ground, this part is going to be touching the ground, flat on the ground. So when I add an extra tre tread board here, this rise is going to be an extra inch higher than all these other rises throwing it all off. So to consider that, all we do, I mean, you just take an inch off the bottom of your stringer. So taking a framing square, I line it up. If the tread board that we're using is an inch thick, then we're going to take an inch off the bottom, like so. Line it up. And then mark. That's the line that we're going to just cut right off, and that's what's going to be touching the ground. Now, the same kind of thing has to be done to the opposite side, where one thing to also consider is that uh, everyone, the last, to get up to our deck, we're going to need five rises. But the, the last rise is going to be the deck itself when we mount this onto it. So the, the stringer itself will only have four rises in this case, which we have one, two, three, four. This top riser is going to be here. This, this line right here is going to be cut. So this is the top of our stringer behind these lines. With that, uh, with that uh, we have to also, at the same time, to take out that extra uh, riser board space that's going to be on every one of these right here, which will be, we're going to say, an inch thick, we also have to make room for what's called a ledger board. And a ledger board is going to be a horizontal board that goes across all the stair stringers and connects them, and at the same time, gives you a flat surface to nail that onto the deck itself. So with the ledger board, we're going to make it an inch and a half thickness. And also, like we did back there, we're also going to have to take an inch, another inch off for all these riser boards that's going to be here because we don't want our tread to be an extra inch uh, wider right down on the very top. So with that, we're going to take a total of two and a half inches. So just like before, on the other side, line this up. Take both riser board and ledger board space out.
line that up. And there you go. This should be the top of our stair, stair stringer all the way down to here. That's it. Uh, what, I'm, I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do now is cut this out and wrap this video up. Here's our final product from all the lines that we determined to cut out. Uh, what would be done in this case now afterwards is you would make one more identical stringer just like this or two depending on how wide you want your stairs to be. And then afterwards you would attach your ledger board right here to attach all your stringers together onto the porch and then add some kind of footer to tie in to attach the landing as well on this side. Uh, then. Finally, you would attach your tread boards and riser boards as you finish, and that'd be it. That concludes my tutorial. I hope that you've learned something from this do-it-yourself project. I'm Brian Prentice, and thank you for watching.